Morning. So um, I wanted to cover something slightly different today. Um, I've been learning to code Python uh, or in Python for probably about four or five months seriously. Um, I am not by any stretch of the imagination kind of, a, you know, a cl I, would, I wouldn't class myself as a dev. Um, I am literally just writing code to solve problems. <laughs> Um, and I've got some reflections because I, I struggled for years to to kind of get into programming and learning programming, um, or in fact any type of writing code. People say Python's easy. I disagree. I think it's a, an acquired skill, but it, nevertheless, I think it's a skill that you can you can learn. So, what are my kind of takeaways from um, from from this learning process. So I'd say, first of all, you're going to struggle to make it work by just doing tutorials. So by that, what I mean is, is that you need to actually get stuck in and start writing code. So not copying code, not opening a book and copying code out of a book, maybe jamming bits of code that you've got from a book together um, to write a program to solve a problem. But nevertheless, it needs to be code that you are you you are actually writing yourself and actually solving problems yourself. So it's the thought process of thinking in steps and loops and solving problems that I think is is quite important. So that's for me. That's the bit that makes it stick as a, and keeps you interested. Um, and what I found is that I use this uh, site dmoj um, dmoj.ca and I'll put a link in in the um, description to uh, to cover it um, but dead simple you create an account it's totally free loads of schools load up problems onto this site and you can just click on a problem and see the description and you know just have a go at solving it and put a put an actual solution in um, <clears throat> And it's very straightforward. Once you've submitted, you get some points and there's kind of a leaderboard and you can see where you're up to on that um, on that 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 sort of on that leaderboard. So I'm not in the top hundred, I'm like four thousand five hundred or something. Um so certainly not in the <laughs> I've but I've put in probably, you know, nearly two hundred problems now. So um that's the key. It's like getting the getting problems, solve them, solve them, solve, keep solving the problems. And after a bit, you get familiar with the syntax and the the kind of way that pro the, the the code works. So yeah, really important. And also, don't like leap in and solve anything that's like incredibly difficult. Just go for low three point problems. And if you come across one that's badly worded, just shut it down and open a different one and you know there's like thousands of problems on there that um you know they all kind of work towards solving various things so i think for me hi gamgla it's um cantonese it just means it is what it is um you just need to accept the fact that at the moment you can't code but that will change um anywhere through throughout the journey or throughout anything, accept where you are. Um, it's really important because if you accept where you are, you can then work out how to improve that position and move to a better position. So it's really important. And I've heard people say, ah, oh, that's just tr really trite. Um, no, it's not. It's very it's very important to be able to recognise where you are and what you need to, and then work out steps to get from where you are to where you need to be so don't worry about where you are if you can't code at all you can't code if you can't speak a foreign language you can't speak a foreign language accept it you're not going to be very good at speaking a foreign language or coding to start with but you can change that and you can take it in steps so for me really important that and I, I, I use that in business all the time. Where are we at now? And what are the next steps to move from where we are to where we need to be? Um, this is really kind of critical, I guess. The, you know, a pr 
anything that you are learning to do will be really difficult. You'll come up, you'll come up against various problems as you're trying to solve. Um, you're trying to solve the problems on DMLJ. It, there'll be weaknesses that you've got, um, things that you can't do very well yet. Um, but it's really good and important to struggle with those problems because that's how your brain kind of engages and learns how to get better and how to improve itself. That I, you know, I, I put here one one of the problems on DMLJ took me ten days to solve. Um, so you'll see me solve something that I've not seen before in in like ten twenty minutes, including um, explaining it. Um, but there was one that I got set as part of learning co uh, learning to code by solving problems book, and it took me ten days to figure it out. And once I figured it out, it was like, oh, that's totally obvious. But it isn't obvious at the time. But that struggle is what gets you to where you need to be. So when you open a problem and you go, I have no idea how to do this. Keep on blasting at it. Put it down. Pick it up again. You know, do some other ones in the meantime. There are, um, you know, go away and look up some of the skills if you need to learn, you know, uh, how to do dictionaries or, um, or, or you know, so whatever it may be, then that's fine. Um, you just need to kind of go away and think, right, okay, how do I, how do I d develop these skills? And then r just write a little bit of test code and then work out how you're going to put that into your into your code it's not cheating because you're not trying to win a competition it's <laughs> the we we're using dmoj here not as a um not as a, a a competition site but merely as a um a, a place to find problems and to see if we can meet the test criteria and the problem uh, you know sort of um fulfill the problem statement so i mean for me that that's that's really useful it's not cheating to submit something that you've basically sort of partially found online um what is cheating is claiming that you wrote that code from scratch because you didn't but ultimately um you know it, it's if you're using it in business nobody cares that you've basically kind of cobbled together some code that you found here and there. All they're bothered about is, are you solving a problem? And that's what my coding kind of is is a means to an end for. Um, so, you know, I think that's really important. Um, don't panic and don't give up. You will get to, well, very quickly, you'll be like rabbit and headlight scenario. Um, don't panic. Just kind of think, okay, right, I don't understand this. How am I going to change that? Just, you know, think about the wording. Um, read the problem statement really carefully. And then if it's really kind of beyond you, I mean, I see someone, I'm like, I can't understand it. I just can't understand what the question's actually asking me to do. Sometimes they don't give you sufficient um sufficient detail in the question uh, in the problem statement to actually kind of solve it properly <laughs> get rid of that question and do another one it's not homework um you know you, you are literally there trying to enjoy yourself so if you find something you think god this is written really badly just shut it down and find another one to work on there's tons of replication of similar problems um you know, and they all use very similar kind of concepts, I guess. Um, that's my sort of experience of it anyway. You know, it's getting an input, doing some stuff, and then providing an output and doing that in a kind of loop format and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I think main thing is, is and you know, don't panic when you see that kind of, you need to do this, that, and the other. Anybody who gives you the impression that they can just like blast code out sort of, you know, till the cows come home in real time is, you know, anything other than sort of fairly simple stuff is probably kidding you. Um, and, you know, there is to, to uh, quite a great extent, you know, on YouTube, there is this, this element of, you know, I'm just going to retype this while you're watching and explain it while I'm retyping it. Well, that's not necessarily helping you. 
you need to actually get in there and struggle with the problems yourself. But if you're watching me writing this stuff out and explaining it, I've never seen those problem, that particular problem before. So if I go the wrong way, you know, I'm just telling you, well, this is where I got to with it. This is the way it went. Um, and so far, there's nothing that I've actually written on and, or published that I haven't actually cracked, you know, cracked in real time. I, I, I you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not sort of hiding the ugly truth from your editing it. So I think main thing is, is just be aware of the fact that stuff won't go right. You'll get errors um, and you'll see that on some of my other videos where I'm kind of going, what the hell's going on here? Um, or why is it doing what it's doing? And I sometimes, you, you may notice, I sometimes go quiet because I'm kind of like, right, okay, what's the problem here? Um, but I solve it, you know, all the ones I've published are all ones that I'm actually solving, you know, and, and, and they do work at the end. So, yeah, I think that's really important to uh, to so just be aware. It's not actually easy and, you know, you shouldn't panic because you feel kind of um, inferior compared to anybody else. Um Again, go back to this. You are where you are. It is what it is. Um, next point is code is like a process and sub processes. So in business, we look at um, we look at the way processes work, um, and we say, you know, something comes in through the front door. We do this with it. We do this with it. We do this with it, and then we output it in this format. And that's kind of how code works. And I'll show you sort of a little bit of an example of how this works in business. You know, you, you're looking at things like this is your sort of start point and then you've got decision points and actions. And these are all things that are done by different people or different groups. So ultimately, that's very similar to how a program works. So... For me, what I tend to do is I think of things in step by step anyway. So you kind of maybe see me skipping over that because not that I've pre-written it anywhere else. I haven't got any notes to refer to, as you'll probably be aware from the ramblingness of what I say. But ultimately, I am thinking in steps. So I would say that if you're not familiar with actually doing that, what I would do is I would comment. So I'd say... Uh, you know, uh, get the import, do some logic, do the output. Um, and then within the logic, I'll say, you know, step one. And what you can do is, like with these, where you're doing each step, you can pass this off to, that off to a function. So, you know, you can say, well, I'll put my code into, you know, sort of main and functions, and then write some function. Um, and then what you'll do effective is you'll say uh, this step you'll say pass this up to the function the function will do it return it back and then step two will do another function and you know or use the same function over whatever it may be and th by that you're actually creating a, a structure to your to your code um you know and, and i think that's really kind of valuable way of um of, of doing that use the comments to actually kind of check your work as you go in so that's really kind of I, I think is a really valuable way of doing it I often will start by doing those comments and then kind of building each comment out and that's quite useful um, something I got from the learning to code to solve pro um, but learning to co so uh, code by solving problems book I can never remember what the actual title of the book is, but it's it it's it's just getting that structure. And as I say, I'm quite familiar with thinking of things in a kind of structured way. So that for me, that's a um, that's quite straightforward. But for I accept for other people, it, it 
kind of won't be. You know, you're thinking in terms of I do a thing, I make a decision and then it goes one way or another depending on the decision and that's just the same as kind of using, you know, where you're doing something, you're changing, a, uh, doing some change to a variable and then you're using an if statement. If this, then go this way. If that, then go that way. Um, so it's well worth kind of, even if, if it's something really difficult that you're trying to do, maybe actually sketch it out and just think in terms of things that you're doing, decisions you're making, inputs and outputs, and then don't go any kind of more complex than that. It doesn't have to be difficult, um, but do think about the structure. Um, you will need to refer to manuals, web, uh, etc. I found ChatGPT to be really, really useful. Um, if I'm struggling with the syntax for something, I should maybe try and use the help function within Python. Um, so if you um, if you want it, it's quite quite good because you can just um, do something as simple as help print, and then you run that, and it just tells you kind of some of the actual um, arguments um, that you can use, and you know how you actually kind of format and put together the the the, the the, the whatever it may be and I, I find that's really um that's really useful um I, and if i can't find it there then sometimes or that it's not working the way i expect it to be um i'll just go back um to the you know to the web but as i say if you've done some code and it's not working how you think it is and you've struggled and struggled and struggled just say to ChatGPT, I've written this code. What is why is this not working? Don't give me the new code. Just tell me why it might not be working. And ChatGPT is really good at debugging stuff. But also, if you have an error, um, so if I type something like uh, print, and then I just try and run it, um, actually that's not. Uh, okay, sorry, I've actually kind of got to the stage where I'm kind of almost automatically not making these type of errors. But Python's output um, is really uh, output is really good um, in terms of telling you what the problem is. So this is like you know line one. This is what the error actually is. Um, and then saying it's a name error, name shoes is not de uh, defined. So, you know, if I, I can I fix that by say putting shoes like that, if that's what I want to print, or I can leave it like, like that and saying shoes equal, uh, Okay, so I can fix that because I know what the actual problem is, um, and this is an interesting one that you'll get when um, when you're using uh, Jupyter notebooks where you hash something out and that would normally break the code, but because it remembers what what this variable was, it will you know it will basically kind of still run. Um, if I close the notebook and reopen it, it will fail again so it's just something to be aware of i guess um but ultimately you know you will need to refer to manuals web and other resources don't be frightened of that it's not considered to be cheating if you're actually looking up the thing because you know almost everybody who i've kind of watched tutorials of um, or I've, I've read that about the, the writing stuff, they will get to a point where they don't understand how things work, particularly in things like where you're pulling in external libraries, um, you know, t time, timing, time date, um, anything else, um, you know, uh, trying to interface with APIs and all that type of stuff when you get more advanced. Um, at the end of the day, it's like nobody knows how to do that stuff until they've read the read the uh, documentation. So, you know, don't be afraid, and you know, do RTFM. Um, and then, finally, I would say keep trying. So, you know, don't be afraid to kind of struggle, but you need to keep struggling. 
because if you don't keep struggling, you might as well not start. You need to keep going, keep struggling, keep doing, keep trying. Um, and, you know, sometimes take a step backwards to consolidate where you're at. So I got to a point in the um, Learning to Code by Solving Problems book, and I was kind of, this isn't really embedded at this stage. Um, I need to go back a step and just get really comfortable with this understanding, consolidating things, particularly around kind of just writing code, doing the logic, um, you know, the sort of syntax of the logic, um, uh, you know, uh, things like functions, which are kind of quite difficult until you actually have used them a few times and then they just totally make sense. Um, and I'll cover that in probably another video somewhere. But at the end of the day is keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. Um, if you find a problem you can't solve, go away and find another problem, try that. Um, and then maybe come back to that original problem at some point. I've got tons that I've marked as unsolved. Um, and, you know, at some point I'll go back and review those. And often what seemed like as though it was impossible a while ago is actually kind of doable now because I've kind of got the skills. So don't give up. And I think it's re that's probably the most important thing that I can pass on to you. You know, so good I said it twice. Don't give up. Keep going. You will get there. You know, I recognise that I'm better at coding than I was four months ago. And it has embedded really kind of quite well now. So I'm getting so that a lot of it has become second nature. But I'm only one step ahead of you. So, you know, if you're starting from scratch, if you're trying a reasonable amount, putting a decent amount of time in and you, you're actually sort of going through trying to solve problems like I'm showing you, then you will get there, you know. Um, so keep trying. Good luck and um, speak to you on another video. Thanks very much for your time. Bye for now.